Yeah, we're going to stay cool through the weekend. Um, you know, a pro tip on traveling, by the way, I saw a slush on the side and the shoulder. Mm -hmm. If you get into that, it can pull your car into the median or off the road. Really? It's the drag on whatever wheels that hit the slush, it'll, it'll grab you. It, I mean, you're going 60 miles an hour or 50. Mm -hmm. It'll take you right away. So beware. It's slushy snow. The light, fluffy stuff isn't as bad, but it can do that, too. So but I'm hoping that's a tip I can just save yeah. until next winter, yeah. please. I, I don't want to use it again. Let it go. Right? <laughs> we're we're done with about the snow. <laughs> Let's do it. All right, so we're going to the weekend. Uh, we'll stay cool. Temperature's a little bit below normal. Quick showers from time to time. This isn't a washed-out weekend. It's a splendid pattern, too. By the way, parts of northern New England, <laughs> get this stat. Some places have seen almost four feet of snow since March 1st in northern New England in select locations, the upper Connecticut River Valley, parts of western Maine. Wow, huh? Anyway, snow showers are continuing across Nashua, back over to southwestern New Hampshire near Ringe, and then also onto Gloucester from time to time. Boston 36 feels like 28. The winds are gusting to 24 miles an hour. It's a steady breeze that occasionally surges on Cape Cod, but otherwise the winds are coming down and the wind chill factor running in the mid and upper 20s. Those are the numbers you're going by first thing in the morning. Here's your friend low pressure. Not so friendly, right? Its destination is Bar Harbor. And then what? Well, that's a great question. It gets to Bar Harbor and then it reverses course and goes straight south, believe it or not. And that goes off of Cape Cod through the weekend. And then finally by Sunday, it's out to sea. So it's still in the Gulf of Maine, unfortunately, and it still influences our weather for tomorrow. So that means we'll start off maybe with a few rays of sun, but whatever sun we get collapses and go into the cloud cover. You can see that happen right here. Here come the clouds once again in the afternoon and a pop-up shower. Or maybe even a flurry across Worcester or greater Worcester. A lot of that would not even accumulate, though. Anything that's flaking or flurrying, don't worry, it's not going to accumulate with temperatures in the middle 40s. And the clouds are pretty tight through the afternoon. The breezes are present, but they're not intense. How about that? Saturday, passing shower. In fact, they're more numerous on Saturday than they will be for tomorrow or for Sunday. Sunday features more sun and 47 degrees. The air mass is pretty chilly, so getting into the 40s is going to be a struggle. There's a 60% chance that you'll be tagged by a quick passing shower on Saturday. It'll be numerous. I don't think anybody comes away totally dry on Saturday, so let's put it that way. The path of totality. So this dark line here that goes across the country. Uh, for that to pass over a particular city or a particular town anywhere on the planet, once every 350 to 375 years. Wow. So Boston isn't involved in that. We'll have to wait till 2079 to get into that path of totality. But here's where it is, and that's why it's such a big deal across upstate New York and back into Burlington, Vermont, and northern Maine. We're still lovely, and we'll have 93% coverage here in Boston. That's good enough for a lot of folks. It starts at about 2.30, 2.15, and goes until 4.30. Totality around 3.30 or so. So there it is. The forecast looks good. And then the temperatures dip on Tuesday and Wednesday. They go back into the 50s, thanks to sea breezes, a little bit more pronounced at the coast, and then we're mild again at the end of the week. We're back after the break.